One, two, three, you hear that? Got it? One, two, three. All the way over. There we go. I had it on uh, mute. And the complaint last week was that every time I turned my head, um, Katie and Randy couldn't hear me down there. So that's why I rearranged these. So, uh, and now that's up there, so you can just grab it. <laughs> That'll work well. Works much better, yeah. And this shouldn't interfere with that too badly. I think I put it down a little bit, so I don't look like I'm all microphone. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is June the 13th. First question Ron asked this morning is, is this Father's Day? No, it's not. That's next week. <laughs> Mother's Day is the second Sunday in May. Father's Day is the third Sunday in June. Right? Sounds good? As far as I know, too, unless they change it. And then they've got uh, Grandparents' Day and Sibling Day and Family Day and every kind of day under the sun. But this is the Lord's Day. And that's why we've come together. We're going to open up in prayer. Lord God, we stand before you today with humbled hearts and with troubled hearts. We know and acknowledge, Father, that you created all things. Yes, all things, the world and everything in it, above it, under it, and all life. Those who believe in you and those who do not, you patiently reach out and call out to all peoples to receive your message and salvation. I pray that you help us to be your obedient servants, your instruments of love. It is not our place to change who people are, but to live our lives so that we reflect who you are. Give us the words to speak, or help us not to speak when necessary. When you say it is necessary, help us to be quiet. Father, there are other burial sites from the residential schools in Manitoba found. Many of the deaths do not show up in the records so they're not recorded. Abba, Father, help us. Help us to cope with what's taking place. Embrace all indigenous peoples with your love. Let them know that you are with them always. Help them to understand that it is the evil hearts of mankind that has perpetrated these atrocities. Lord, there are seven things that you detest, and we know this for certain because it's in your word. It's written that the things you detest are haughty eyes or those who look down on others. You also detest the lying tongue and the hands that kill the innocent. You detest a heart that plots evil and feet that race to do wrong. You also detest a false witness who pours out lies and a person who sows discord in a family or a person who says and does things to cause problems like arguments or fighting. We see this recording in Proverbs, and we trust your word, Lord. Help us to be the people that you created us to be. Help us to be your faithful servants. Lord, prepare us to be your instruments of love and of worship. Let everything we say and everything we do reflect your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we're going to sing three songs before uh, the message. The first one is Jesus, Lover of My Soul. Now, it's going to be a little different than some of you are familiar with. I couldn't find the regular chorus that we always sang. I thought I had it in those tracks, but I can't for the life of me find it. Anyway, this one is the hymn, and it's really quite pretty. So we're going to try it. We've never sung it here before, but we're going to do it today.
That is a little different, isn't it? It's like the uh, the Hebrew songs, the music that goes along. It's very melodic. It's quite nice. So it's something. Once we're opened up, it's something we'll we'll sing and we'll have the worship team again. I would hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next song we're going to sing is Jesus, name above all names. We know that one. God Almighty. And we say that over and over, God Almighty or Almighty God. It's also, uh, there's another line there, El Elyana Adonai. El is God, Elyon, Most High, Adonai is Lord. So it uh, translates, uh, El Elyon is God Most High. Na means please, or we beseech thee, or I beseech thee, and Adonai is Lord. Then we've got Er Kekamna Adonai, and that's uh, Psalms 18, verse 1. And it says, I love you, my Lord. Now the Na in there doesn't have a translation when it's uh, with those, uh, that expression. But it's put in there, I think because it's got that extra note there. It's just Na. So, El Shaddai, that's what we're going to sing.
beautiful song. It is. Wonderful message. And you know, people don't understand who the Messiah was or what he was supposed to be. They expected a conqueror, but he did conquer the world. But they don't see it that way. They think of conquering as fighting, having a war. And that's, that's not what it is. Okay, our message today is about peace rather than worry or fear. Now, the scripture that uh, came to mind as soon as I was enlightened as to what the message was going to be for today. And that scripture is found in Philippians chapter 4. And I think anyone that had uh, kids in uh, vacation Bible camp or even in kids club would know that because there's a song with those two uh, scriptures. It's don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Now, they, in the song, they don't use the first part of verse 7, but they should. It's then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you could understand. And his peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. These verses um, were used uh, several years ago. I can't remember how many years ago it was. It's got to be about five or six years ago. But... Um, it's the type of a verse, and it was the type of music that you sang it to, that it stays, so it's easy to remember. And we all know that if, uh, if you sing scripture, it's going to stick with you. You're going to remember it. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. That's the best part of it. Because we can't understand the peace that God's, God gives to us sometimes. And it's, other people can't understand it either, but you have to be a child of God in order to understand it. As we go through life, there will always be things that happen to cause us concern or fear or just plain having trouble. And Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry, pray. Then we go through the Bible, and I mean really go through the Bible, read it so that you can understand it, see what's happening and why it's happening. We see that people were not much different back then than they are now. They still like to fight. They still like to be in control. When things went along well back then, everything was great. But then they got content, too content. They got haphazard about everything, their responsibilities. And then problems would come in. People would complain, start playing the blame game. They can do a better job than somebody else. They can uh, handle it better. I'm more qualified. Why aren't I doing it? That's your, the uh, part that I'm using anyway. That's in numbers. That's what I'm going to be using. And if we look back uh, when Moses was leading the um, Israelites out of Egypt, they had some problems on the way. They had problems getting out of there, but once they get out of there, they still had more problems. They were going through the wilderness, and many were not happy with his leadership. They felt that uh, he was no, no more qualified than they were. So why was he the leader? Well, I know why he was the leader. Do you know why he was the leader? Yeah, God put him there. That's right. He's the one that he talked to him in the burning bush. He didn't talk to these other people. They didn't even know about the burning bush. Not unless they got the written word. Now, part of the reason was uh, they were, had fear for the unknown. They didn't know where they were going. Well, Moses didn't know where they were going either, other than to the promised land. And he was being faithful, and he was going to lead them there. Moses sent leaders from each tribe to scout out that promised land. And that's recorded in Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. It says, The Lord now said to, <clears throat> said to Moses, Send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. Now this is the best part. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him to do. Now they went through the land for 40 days, and 40 nights, of course, because that follows. Now 40 seems to be a significant number in the Bible because you see it over and over again. Some people get hung up on numbers. I have no idea why. But when you see it over and over in the Bible, then you're looking at, yeah, there's, there's something there. There's a pattern. Rain fell for 40 days, 40 nights, remember that? The flood. And Noah built the ark. People thought he was crazy, but he was being obedient. 
Moses lived in Egypt for 40 years. He was prepared for leadership for 40 years. He was 80 years old, remember when he started? He led the children through Israel, of Israel through the wilderness for 40 years. Moses fasted on Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights. Then he went down and he was carrying the Ten Commandments. That's in Exodus 34. Goliath challenged the Israelites twice a day. Guess for how many days? 40 days. 40 days. You got it. And then David defeated him. And we're told that in 1 Samuel. Jesus was tested by the devil in the wilderness for 40 days. You got it. Matthew 4. The period from the resurrection of Jesus to his ascension was 40 days. While the scouts gave their report to the people in Numbers, again, chapter 13, uh, verses 25 to 27 says, After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel. They reported to the whole community that what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. Now, I didn't write down everything that was uh, in there because they initially gave a good report that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's got wonderful produce there, huge produce. But then they got sidetracked. But not all of them. Twelve of them went in. Two of them gave a good report and stuck with it. The other ones started off with a good report and got sidetracked. And rather than focusing on the fruitfulness of the land, they started focusing on the size of the people. There was ten of them that did that. And the results are listed in verses 34 and 35. It says, Because your men explored the land for 40 days, you must wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each day, suffering the consequences of your sins. Then you'll discover what it's like to have me as an enemy. Guess who's talking there? It's God. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will certainly do these things to every member of the community who has conspired against me. They will be destroyed here in this wilderness, and here they will die. Now remember verse 3. They were mad at Moses, eh? because they said, well, we should go back to Egypt. But Moses did what God had commanded him to do. He was faithful. Two of the uh, scouts were faithful as well, and that was Joshua and Caleb. Now, chapter uh, 16, this is, that was in chapter 13 that those things happened. Chapter 16, there's more problems, and they're against Moses again. They united against Moses and Aaron and said, You have gone too far. The whole community of Israel has been set apart by the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right do you have to act as though you're greater than the rest of the Lord's people? Sounds like they're happy, doesn't it? Hmm. So here comes the part. They are annoyed, and it's called discord. Uh, does anybody have kids that watched uh, My Little Pony? There was a creature in there called Discord, and he was always getting everybody all worked up. Well, these people are causing Discord, and it started with some of the scouts that were back in 13 that uh, gave the bad report. Now, I'm going back. I started that off um, verse 3. I'm going to go back and read verses 1 and 2 of chapter 16. It says, One day Korah, that's not a woman, that's with a K, conspired with Dathan and Abiram. They incited a rebellion against Moses, along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. Starts with one, and then they get a couple more, and then it explodes, and that's what was happening. People will often judge others for the very sins that they themselves are committed, but they just don't see it. They justify themselves, and that way it feels like it's the right thing to do. Romans 2, verse 1 says, You may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. You have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you're condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. 
You know the expression, judge not lest you be judged as well? That's where it comes from. Not too long before the rebellion, God chose the Levites to be the caretakers of the Holy Tabernacle. These folks that were causing the problems were Levites. So they should have been happy with that. They were to look after the structure and its vessels. Part they didn't like, they were to be servants of Aaron and his family because they were the priesthood. And so <laughs> that, that's what got them into trouble. They're saying, they've got a great job. They've got an important responsibility looking after that tabernacle. But what's with these two or three people? How come we've got to serve them? Why do we have to do what they say? Do you know people like that? Almost every place you work, you're going to have people like that, right? Even in your family. We've got a little wee one that's uh, not even four feet tall yet. <laughs> she thinks she's the boss. She keeps telling me she's the boss. Numbers 16, verses 8 to 11 says, Then Moses spoke again to Korah. Now remember, this is the one that incited everybody. Now listen, you Levites. Does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? Korah, he has already given this special ministry to you and your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The Lord is the one you and your followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? See, I don't think they looked at that side of it. They just looked at, we're doing this, and we have to obey him. They don't, didn't look at, who asked them to do it? Who gave them the responsibility to do it? Now, Korah and his cohorts felt they were as good or even better than Aaron and his people. So why should they be his servants? Envy and selfish ambition cause all kinds of trouble in our personal lives, not only at home or at work, but it also bleeds over into the congregations and fellowships. Now, I don't really think we have that problem here, but I, I know there are, my goodness, especially with this um, pandemic, that you see all the bad reports of the uh, different churches, uh, some relatively local, here in Ontario. Um, I don't mean local in Lambton Shores. I don't think there's any issues in Lambton Shores, but um, all over they have problems. And then, of course, it's churches that are uh, being blamed for um, the indigenous children. Uh, they're blaming the religion, but it's mankind that is doing it. It's mankind that uh, has the evil heart and took it upon themselves to do it. James 3, verses 13 to 18 says, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with a humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous, there is selfish ambition in your heart. Don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism, and it's always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Do you ever remember reading that before? Do you know, it uh, doesn't matter how many times you go through the Bible, but uh, every now and again you come up with uh, some scripture that you think, wow, I don't remember that. And it's, I know I've read that numerous times, but you only read bits of it. Bits of it stick. That's why you can read the Bible over and over. That's why it's called the living word because you get something different from it every time you read it. To walk in humility is to be willing to walk in obedience to God in whatever he asks us to do, whether it's to serve somebody else that you don't like. Tough beans. You're serving God. May we all learn to walk in greater humility, in contentment, gentleness, and kindness towards all people, so God can bring unity and peace between all peoples. 
Psalms 133 verse 1 said, It is good and pleasant when God's people live together in peace. We need to open our hearts. We're in what's called the last days. We've been in the last days since uh, Jesus was crucified. But we are definitely in the last days, and you can see by the things that are going on around the world. We don't know how long this world will be here. Well, the world will last. It's the people that's not going to be here. And God's kingdom is going to come down. And we want to have our place there. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to be united in prayer with all of our brothers and sisters, regardless of nationality, color, age, gender, whatever. God is moving among his people. And he'll physically and spiritually restore them. Ephesians 4, verses 2 to 6 says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. That's a hard one, right? Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body, one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Amen. That's our message for today. It's a good job I finished when I did. You're starting to fall asleep. <laughs> Sorry about that. He was yawning. I couldn't resist. And when there's not many people in the church, I can do that. I can pick on you. We're, <laughs> we're going to sing three more songs. Um, in the sweet by and by, do Lord, and peace like a river. They're all good songs. And I think we know them all, right? And then when uh, we're finished with that, Hank, if you can close in prayer, that'd be great.
and then just have to go for a second because you don't peek in. So uh, we're na Navy Glacier now. We don't peek in at the Navy when you're not wearing it. So and our daughter Lori, she's going into the Navy pair. You know when they do the pull and they do the repair of the leggings and the pendant. She's going in on the 16th. And while I was in, just in and out too, I just went, whoop. It took longer to heal than, well, not quite longer to heal than uh, the glacier, because that took a whole year. So, anyway, thank you. Nothing is impossible for you. We pray for Lori. We pray for each and every person in this world that is uh, and hurting and those surgeons that are working on each and every patient daily, Lord. Be with them all across the world, not just here in Canada or the United States, but your whole world. Father God, just be with Pastor Linda, uh, Brother Ron, Brother Don, and my wife, Stan and the rest of the family as well, Lord. Be with each and every one across this nation. Be with those that are hurting today, Lord. Be with those that have lost loved ones. And be with each and every person that is hurting today, Lord. Be with and guide us on a daily basis, Lord. Walk with us. Please walk with each and every one of us. We're going through a lot of hurt, a lot of trials, a lot of things we're uncertain about, Lord. But we can be certain that if we've given our life to you, that that day of glory will come one day. Lord, help us to be your servants on a daily basis. Lord, especially help those that are in the third world country, where it's against the law to worship you, where they have to be watching out daily whether they're going to live or die. We have so much freedom here, Lord. God, just keep this freedom here. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We can't forget um, all around the world. We've got missionaries all around the world, and they put their lives on hold in their home country so they can go and proclaim the word of God. And they need prayer at all times, because their life is in danger. It's like you said, they're, they're not free to uh, worship God. They're not free to teach about God. So it's, um, the, what we can do is pray for them. And that's very important. And that's not just what we can do. It's what we can do. And that's what we need to do. God bless each and every one of you. And may God be with you until we meet again.